Well, I made it through almost a month's worth of programming for WCW 2000, and my brain is ready to leak out my goddamn ears. I'm John Ritlin with a retro review of WCW Nitro from May 8th, 2000, the Nitro after Slamboree 2000, where Canyon fell off of the cage and hit the ramp, trying to recreate the Mankind Undertaker spot in the same venue where Owen Hart died just under a year previously. And this was Brawls and Talking the Show. None of the matches went beyond seven minutes. One match went about ten seconds before DQ. Vince Russo could not write a program to save his goddamn life. He definitely couldn't write a coherent one either. So, we get the New Blood attacking DDP, who is with Canyon in a hospital after Canyon had te taken said bump. And So the New Blood attacks him, and then Kimberly dumps a bedpan with liquid on him. Lovely. Great way to start the show. This is exactly how you utilize so many talents that deserve so much better. This wasn't good comedy. This wasn't even comedy. This was just bad television. So, we get Arquette with New Blood in the ring sometime after. And Arquette talking about how he swerved DDP Bischoff like he swerved and we swerved. It's the ultimate swerve. Swerve, bro. In other words, it's a swerve, bro. Arquette then says, shut up a lot. Like he was trying to be the what's up guys from the old Budweiser ad. Um, and then here's DDP and a diamond cutter to David Arquette. I'm kind of condensing this shit because I'm not going to talk at length about all of this stuff. But boy, Arquette, hey, at least he was having a whole lot of fun and did the right things with his money, with his payouts, because he respected wrestling. But I don't think he'd be seen really on TV after this until sometime around New Blood Rising 2000, because he made some other appearances, but he didn't really make a whole lot of others after this. So, we then get the New Blood attacking, or some of the New Blood attacking DDP, and here's Sting to help, and then we get another brawl. The second brawl that we've had in two segments. Fucking hell. We get a stretcher match with Mike Awesome later. DDP versus Mike Awesome. Sting versus Jeff Jarrett for the world title. And Bischoff makes these matches because why the fuck wouldn't he? We get Terry Funk versus Norman Smiley and Ralph's Hardcore Championship. Norman Smiley says, if we lose, we're out of WCW. Because apparently, uh, they were just told that off camera and we weren't allowed to see it on camera. So, okay, it's a rematch from Slamboree 2000. And Norman Smiley commandeers a golf cart and then chases Terry Funk, tries to throw a water bottle at him and then screams and then ch and gets chased away. Wall Funk is riding on the back of the thing, and they hit some very obviously set-up crates to have a cool stunt. And, well, Ralphus's pants fall down again, because that's all that we need to see again. Wasn't bad enough that people paid pay-per-view prices to see that on Slamboree the previous night. We have to see it again on network television. We then get cookie sheets, and he pins both of them. Funk pins both of them, so they're both gone from WCW. I think this was when Ralphus was just, like, signed up, and I think Norman Smiley actually came back. And made some more appearances because the whole idea of people leaving meant absolutely nothing. Uh, then here's Ric Flair. He talks about World Championship uh, legacy. You know, the legacy of like various titles. He talks about, you know, being because since they were in St. Louis, he talks about, you know, Jack Briscoe. He talks about ver various others and everything. And saying, you know, to Rick, hey, you need to keep fighting and everything and get better and you will get better. And then talks about how David turned on him last night. And alignment with Russo, and he's talking to David, and there's Russo also. Russo says he spits in the face of, tr of tradition. We know this because Russo doesn't give a shit about wrestling. He hates wrestling, as he said in that Dark Side of the Ring episode, the Brawl for All one. And that's okay, Russo, because wrestling hates you. At least the vast majority of fans do. There are still fans out there that like Russo. I don't know why. I'm not going to judge you guys. I just don't fucking know how you could say that this guy was any good for wrestling. Because any good that he may have, any good ideas he may have come up with that the talented Vince decided to reshape and make plausible were are all nullified by the fact that he didn't really care about it at all. He wanted to make it a, you know, a car crash, Jerry Springer knockoff, and not even a good one. Because those shows at least had some great, you know, had didn't have great, but they don't age very well. But at least that product kind of lasted a little bit longer where... The car crash mentality of the Attitude Era doesn't hold up. Yes, there are some iconic moments, but at this point, it wasn't even a Monday Night War. It was essentially Nitro getting absolutely goddamn destroyed. And anyway, back to this promo. He, you know, he says, spits in the face of tradition, mentions Jack Briscoe, Sam Muchnick, who, you know, since they were in St. Louis, he has a name there, a pretty big name there. 
and a lot of others and Dusty Rhodes and all. He mentions a whole bunch of others and says, hey, wait a second, why don't you take on your son at Great American Bash? Flair won a battle royal the previous week to get a shot at the World Heavyweight Champion at Great American Bash, but we're just going to have that, and I believe Nash takes on Jarrett at Great American Bash. I'm going to keep reviewing these despite the fact that every you know, single voice that, you know, like I could possibly have in my head, yes, much like Randy Orton, is telling me, save what's, uh, what left, what's left of your sanity, that is, and don't review it. But I'm going to because, well, views, and you guys like to see me lose my goddamn mind. So, Rick then says, well, I'm talking to David. I'll call Vince right now. I'll call Vince McMahon. Russo burned his bridge. I didn't burn a bridge. And I could get David a contract, and he could be a pretty big star. To be fair, they might have been able to get something out of David at that point, but not by 2002 when he was, you know, when he was beat up by The Undertaker, and that was about it. Um, <clears throat> then it looked like David was going to agree, and then he uh, bashes this little Statue of Liberty over, um, as opposed to the big Statue of Liberty, over Rick's head. I don't know how he would have been able to pick that up or fit it inside the arena. That would have been something. And Rick gets laid out because Russo has to have the upper hand on it. Russo was a terrible, uh, terrible character on TV. Terrible personality on TV. Couldn't do anything at all. Chuck Palumbo comes out mocking Lex Luger doing the poses and doing the, you know, the little bar thing, the flexi bar, as I call it. And then we get Lex and Liz out there, and then Lex gets laid out. The Russo and Bischoff security take Liz back there and... Yeah, we get the flexi bar, you know, I'm just going to call it that because it actually sounds pretty funny uh, across Lex's back and head, and then he stretched it out later. Russo says to Liz, I'm trying to help you, Liz, and how about this? You win this match against Daphne. You've never been in a match. We're paying you a lot of money. Face Daphne, beat her. I'll let you out of the contract, and you go live with Lex. This is something that we're actually going to do on nationwide television. Sean Stasiak versus General Erection, a.k.a. the former Hugh Morris. Kurt Henning in his corner. Kurt Henning helps uh, Stasiak get the victory by pulling him out of the way. And a Henning plex, one, two, three. And then Henning kind of just stares down Nash. Nash comes down, lays out Stasiak, and then uh, calls out Russo. Here's the filthy animals who we haven't seen together since sometime in 99. And then Hogan comes down, and we get a brawl, and then we're going to get a street fight later. St. Louis street fight style. And then Bischoff and Kimberly are on commentary for this following match. DDP versus Mike Awesome stretcher match, and it didn't last very long. A chair busted open DDP, a table spot where he got, you know, powerbomb through a table. They make DDP sign the divorce papers, despite the fact he's knocked out. And then DDP gets taken out on a stretcher. And then we get Scott Steiner yelling at Russo, I do what I want to do, you aren't going to tell me what to do. And then, you know, um, Scott comes out and set, talk about size does matter, according to his freaks, and taking it to the mountaintop, and all the da 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 and then Tank Abbott lays out Scott Steiner. Because Russo wasn't happy being called out, we then get Harlem Heat 2000, the Mamelukes, Vito, and uh, Johnny the Bull, Harris Brothers, six on two against Chronic, and then D uh, Douglas and Bagwell come down. Shane Douglas and Don't Call Me Dean Douglas and Buff Bagwell are there, the rightful tag team champions, but Chronic stole the belts. At Slam, because why it was Thunder or Slambury. You know, all this stuff starting to mix together, so if I forget a couple things as far as when they happen, even though I just reviewed the stuff, forgive me, WCW 2000 is brain-meltingly stupid. So, and it's an elimination match, apparently. We also cut to footage of Scott Steiner throwing chairs looking for Russo. We then get uh, the Mamelukes eliminated, and then we get the Harris Brothers eliminated, because it was just announced as a six-on-two match, and then... Bagwell and Douglas run in, and then, you know, Stevie Ray accidentally hits Big T, the former Ahmed Johnson, with a slapjack, and that's it, goodbye, Big T's gone, and oh boy, you know, Harlem Heat gets eliminated, and then <clears throat> it looks like Douglas and Bagwell are going to take the tag titles back, but then, but then, uh God, if we get, we we just get a whole bunch of bullshit where Scott Steiner attacks him, calls out Russo, calls out Abbott, here comes Abbott, um, he mocks Goldberg, um, you know, doing his entrance and everything with all security. And then Scott Steiner's beating up Tank Abbott in an official match. And then Rick Steiner attacks Scott Steiner. So we're going to get that match. Oh, God, we're going to get that kid, that weird goofy cage match, that asylum cage -ish thing at uh, Great American Bash 2000. Oh, boy, that was fun. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Maybe it's because I just want to torture myself with some bad wrestling. Because I watch good wrestling. I watched New Japan Duntaku 2013 recently. Boy, sometimes bad wrestling is just fun to mock. So, 
we were going to get that match. We then get Elizabeth versus Daphne. It goes 10 seconds, maybe 15. Uh, Liz tosses uh, Daphne around a little bit with some hair pulling. And then here's Medusa to cause a DQ. So the match gets thrown out. Even though the DQ rules are supposed to be relaxed, here's Mona, the future Molly Holly. She attacks. We get a chair to Medusa from Liz. And that's it. And then Liz gets taken to the back. Hogan and Nash versus Kidman. Awesome. Ray and Conan. So the Filthy Animals and Mike Awesome. And then we get we get Hoovy appearing on commentary. Hogan chases all the guys to the back. And then Hoovy drop kicks Nash and then gets laid out with the jackknife. Horace Hogan helps Hulk chase off the Filthy Animals. Or does he? No, wait. He gets hit with pipes. Hogan does. Hulk Hogan. And then put in the trunk of a Cadillac. That's 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 a good way to write people off, I guess. Except Hogan will be right back, and we'll be right back after these messages. No, he will face Kidman at Great American Bash 2000, because they have to repeat this shit again. Oh, Sting versus Jeff Jarrett, WCW Championship. It went five, maybe six minutes. We is a mess. There was a scorpion spot at one point, and then the mat gets cut open, and uh, Vampiro drags Sting down there. And then, a, you know, smoke appears. It's a fire extinguisher. It's all this bullshit. He's covered in red. Sting is. And then gets pinned. And then the new blood comes down. And here's Nash. And then Hogan. And then they're brawling and everything. And then suddenly the monster truck from Goldberg shows up, runs over Tank Abbott's car, tries to run it over again, and gets stuck. So even Ho uh, Goldberg's truck happens to botch. It really is the best of Bill Goldberg. That is the end of this episode. I cannot believe that I managed to get this much time out of this goddamn shit. And I'm going to keep reviewing this, even if it drives me completely insane. So anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.